Is there a connection between the terror of ISIS and the religion of Islam? Where is it that those people coming from? What kind of education is it that they had? How come that when it's last night or Charlie Hebdo or what happened in Beirut, you know, they are always the same people? The main problem in my uh, point of view is the problem of education. Why? It started from the education because in some places, in some places, there is a bias Education. The education is based on exclusion, where anti-tolerance. I mean, in many places. In the there Islamic is, world, we have we have to focus on a program of education. That's why, uh, that's why in another panel I have proposed an uh, Arab Marshall Plan, which could lead essentially with the good governance and education, because new good governance and education. The, the, and the open education is essential to prevent such kind of barbarism. It starts with the education and then the development in some various areas because also po poverty uh, increases, improves such kind of behavior. But just to understand you correctly, are you saying that the fanatics are educated to become fanatics? Yes, 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 yes. How? I'm saying that very clearly. How? Because there is a kind of education which uh, profess, leads to such kind of barbarism and such kind of fanatism. An education of exclusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, not recognize the other. They are, uh, they, this, this is a biased education. And uh, we have to start from here. What do you think? Is it education? Well, as an educator myself, I wish I could agree. But the fact is that quite a number of the people who have perpetrated the terrorist activities in Europe, or indeed who have gone to the Middle East to join the forces of Islamic State, are well-educated Europeans, children of immigrants, those arrested in Britain or in France connected with this kind of crimes, went to French schools, educated in uh, égalité, fraternité, and so on, um, in a secular, lay environment. And none of this has protected them. Now, one should, of course, say that five or six percent or more of the population of France are Muslim. And what we are talking about are 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000, a tiny proportion. Um, it's, it would be extraordinary to expect an educational system to be able to uh, get it right, as it were, but with 100%. Have, excuse me, but you because, have... no, let me finish a second. In Europe, we had terrorism as well, European terrorism. In Italy, the Red Brigades, the Bader Meinhof gang, in uh, the Irish, uh, the IRA, the Basque terrorist. Terrorism is not something which is only in the Middle East. We now know of, of, of it. And these people, the Red Brigades, the Bader Meinhof gang, were perfectly well educated. They were taught probably Latin and philosophy and something about Hegel and Immanuel Kant. And yet they became terrorists. So it can't be an explanation. It's, it's always tempting for intellectuals to want to blame education, to want to blame media. But I would also add another factor in the you know, why fanaticism appears, and that's politics um, and ideology, but particularly, particularly even practical politics. You know, one of the mistakes I think we've made in Europe over the last um, 50, 60 years is to assume, and even actually the nature of your question, the structure of this conference reflects that, is that we assume that we've changed human nature and we've eliminated barbarism and fanaticism and we've created a civilization that doesn't have them anymore. No, actually what we did is we created a situation in which those things were, um, uh, you know, that it wasn't advantageous to be a barbarian and it wasn't, you know, useful to be a fanatic and it didn't get you anywhere and it didn't create a career for you and it eliminated those kinds of possibilities. Whereas, as, as you just pointed out, 
Hitler created a political system in which being the more fanatical you were, the more higher you rose, this, and the more... What is the origin of this political culture? The, the, I mean, the hate, hatred so exists everywhere, as we see on the internet. During the Nazi era, uh, there is the origin. We know very well... Uh, but from it, where it comes. But it was, and, uh, then but it was also the, the Pol Pot the, uh, era also uh, somewhere. And, uh, it was the creation of a structure and a system and a set of institutions which favored fanatical yes, views. I you know, agree. one of the things you learn quickly, as everybody at this table knows, when you, when you read archives or when you read um, the history of totalitarian regimes, nobody with a tiny number of exceptions, you know, very, for, nobody who's acting as a, you know, as a gulag commander or working at a concentration camp thinks that what they're doing is evil. They think what they're doing is good. They're doing it for a higher cause. That's what I was saying. Yeah, no, they no, think so, that this civilization is the correct one. But they think that... So, the, but, the Nazi but that's thought that it's the... the, the, the because the, the politics of the system is such that that's the behavior that's encouraged and created. It's not just about education. It's also about political institutions. It's about incentives. It's about... I mean, it's about some very mundane things. Um, you know, when you look at... When you look at the opposite problem, you know, who resists fanaticism in a, for example, in a totalitarian society? Um, the people who resist are often people who have nothing to lose. You know, they're young, you know, they're outsiders, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're for some reason outside. That's why Pe I'm, I was who talking about poverty. Poverty led to... Not lead poverty, to... not so much poverty, but people who and, have something to lose, people who have children to raise, people who have mothers to get medicine for, you know, they need to be yeah, within a system and working for something. Social problems. But this is, this is the reason because uh, for, for special institutes of education of these systems, the National Socialists created own schools, own systems of education, not to produce the killers, but to produce an atmosphere of a society who's willing to accept the killers as a part of their own. And what which is why ISIS is dangerous, yes, because um, ISIS is trying to create a state in which... Yes, the, and this is why National Socialist Education System uh, was and is, the uh, remaining rest of it, is dangerous. And I agree with you, uh, it is not possible to start such a movement as a big political movement uh, without to change schools and universities. And you schools, can see though. that, uh, that, that uh, during Nazi era, they, uh, they made big plans how to change these systems to create another attitude of mind, to create an atmosphere um, of acceptance for violence as a part of normal life and the normal politics. And at work. But, uh, um, uh, sorry, about blaming the education system for Nazi Germany seems to me a little bit far-fetched. Uh, Hitler takes over in 1933, even assuming, uh, and uh, it can't be so, that he transforms the education system within a month of him taking power. It means that by 1943, when the de death camp are in full swing, the people who went through the, education, the Nazi education system were 10 years old. Now, we know it's not true. The people who did the killing did not go through the education system in Nazi Germany. They, they'd become uh, barbarians already, partly because of the First World War, partly because of the unemployment, partly because of the propaganda, partly because of the Second World War. War is one of the most fantastic mechanisms to transform normal human beings into barbarians. The education system, of course, contributes, but frankly, it's not the main but It culprit. was also because they were part of a political yes, organization. Yes. There was a la career ladder they could climb. In, in there, words, was a, there was a life they in could In other live. words, their behavior was legitimized. Yes. That is the key thing, that there is a group of people who say, well done, this mm. is what you should be doing. You should kill Jews or infidels or you know, whatever, or bourgeois or whatever it is. Dear friends, let me... I want now to take a role a very difficult and a risky role. I would like to be advocate as a devil's advocate. Yes. Mm, we speak, you mentioned, and the topic is, are the still barbarians? But don't you think that we should also discuss 
What does it mean about Bergen? What does it mean? For whom? Is it that only a European, Europe, Euro, European-centric point of view? Well, when we speak barbarian, very, many, very often we are barbarians to the other. Maybe we are barbarians to those educated people who committed suicide. Well, listen, I remember there was probably, you have, everyone knows, in the 16th century was a debate between um, Sepulveda and uh, Bartolome de las Casas. Uh, after con conquering uh, Mexico, and Las Casas, he wanted to defend the native people. And those, his opponents, were even though they were surprised. So we are not entitled to use them as draft animals. For them, they were only draft animals, not human beings. Well, if you mentioned President Jamal <clears throat> education. Well, yes, in this respect, I will, I will share your opinion because uh, people who treated me well in Auschwitz, Buchenwald, they didn't consider me to be a human being. For them, I was a louse, a bigger, a trigger, um, a cockroach. And what do you do with it? You step on, you annihilate it, you suffocate it. So I was only an insect. And this is what you are right. This is a way how to, they started teaching it, the kids from the beginning. Before to to a great uh, President Jemael about her point of view, uh, the education. For me, it's very important to be careful. Don't take the word education in hostage. Education means a lot of things. Yes. It's not mean the degree of instruction. That's why I talk yeah. about culture. Yes. So it's beyond really, education. It's really important. I agree with what Marianne say, what it means barbarians. That's really important. Yeah. And I grew up with my family in Mali and in Mauritania. I am Muslim. And my mother and my father, they teach me, they educate me how to grow up, how to understand another person. I am the result of this concept of the world come from Muslim education. Two situations exist very strongly in West society. It's a fear of immigration and of terrorism. And fear creates the wrong conception of many things. Yes. And the, our problem is the fear. It's also in my country, fear of the poverty. poverty. Yeah. And, but when I listen today, Amos Oz, this morning, it was really, really strong and interesting for me. <coughs> because he talked about, I learned, I learned two things to, this morning. Two words is... Uh, the, the concept of compromise and the curiosity. When the compromise don't exist, when the curiosity don't exist, it's terrible. But curiosity and compromise need any place in this world. Yeah. Not only this part who come as is today, European people or West people, they need also compromise and curiosity to, to come to us. <laughs>